Hello, welcome to RPA Fridays, session number 22. Welcome, my name is Roman and you probably already know me. I am an RPA developer at Robot ICT, a company based in Czech Republic where we focus on IT and process automation. And we are doing it also using RPA, Robotic Process Automation, which today's session will be about. But also we have our own large IT infrastructure automation tool called DNA, Dynamic Network Automation. So uh, we can do quite a lot of things if you would like to know a little bit more about us. Links are in the video description. Uh, this is another RPA session, so uh, you are welcome to ask questions during the uh, webinar, during uh, I'm uh, presenting, and I will ask uh, answer them at the end. So uh, you are free to uh, type in chat now, and I wish you will uh, give me some questions. If you're watching this from recording, please type your questions in the comments, and I will answer them as soon as possible. Also, we have uh, RPA Academy and our community. So all this you can find in the video description. If you will love, like this, of course, give us a like and subscribe. Thank you. And now let's take a look at today's topic, not to go too long in introductions. So there was a RPA challenge on our community forum, uh, automation forum for uh, RPA and or in other way automating enthusiasts that I publish once a week or two, a new challenge for everyone to challenge your skills, to challenge your uh, potential. And this one was about structured data validation. So we had quite nice solutions there. And uh, for those who don't want to go through them uh, by downloading the files and checking the solutions of, the, uh, of themselves, I want to prepare this session about the data validation. What to, what to think about data validation? Well, this is actually a real use case that, um, uh, that was uh, ap uh, applied. And uh, there is, a, imagine you want some structured data from your counterparty, right? And before you can upload it to your system, you need to prepare some data validation. And I will show you how to do it using UiPath. Of course, eventually you can do it using a Python or some other scripts, but in case you will connect this process with another steps, maybe in some, uh, then, then, then the process will go and interact with some uh, user interface. The best thing is to start with UiPath and it's not simple, uh, not complicated at all. And what we will do is to check for these conditions in a file that I will have here. So that's the file. There are uh, some columns called like uh, date, user description, error code, error name, registered, blah, 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 result. And I create, th that's just the dummy data, and I created these conditions. So first, date must be a valid date format. That's this column. Then the second one, user description cannot be empty. So there is already one empty that should be um, checked. Error code must be exactly three characters long. That's this one. And the result column uh, can only contain approved or rejected in big capitals, right? So, and this is this test data to, there are some mistakes, so let's see. And in case there is an error, I want the robot or the bot the script to just mark it with uh, red uh, highlights. So how to do it? It's pretty simple. Follow me and if you have any questions, uh, you can type them in chat. I will answer it uh, later. So I already have UiPath open and I will just, this is just a blank uh, uh, new project or new process, if you wish so. And the first thing I want to do is to uh, think about how I will approach this data. So for Excel, I can use two set of activities. First, the workbook activities or the Excel uh, activities, the Excel application scope and so on. So for this one, I will use a specific activity to highlight the, um, the cells, but this activity is not uh, um, available within the workbook activities. So I am forced to use the Excel uh, application activities, which is not nothing wrong. It's actually beneficial because I don't have to close this file and it can just interact with it. So let's start with it. I will uh, go and search for the activities. Excel, these ones, and I need to start with Excel application scope, right? That that will give me the container like, okay, now I'm working with some Excel file. And within this file, I can place all these activities to read range and select range. Maybe you see it now for the first time. Maybe you didn't really work with UiPath before. So now I can actually show you how easy it is to do this simple validation. Well, easy in a sense uh, of it's not that complicated. <laughs> so I need to select the file. So I'll go ahead and uh, click that folder button. This will open my project folder where I already prepared the file I just showed you. And I need to uh, 
now I can now, now I'm working with it. There are a couple of things I can actually set set up. For example, to save changes, this will save the file after every each of activity I will use and so on, and a bunch of other things. I don't really need to go into them. So now in this do section, which uh, which will contain all the activities, I need to go ahead and use read range activity. So read range. Uh, activity needs to specify a sheet, which will, which is like a hint here, or you can see it uh, on the right name, uh, on the right side, sheet name. So the sheet name must match, and that's the data. Data. Okay. So let's put data here. Okay. I clicked too many times, and I went too deep. And these uh, these blank um, quotes mean that it will take all the possible data. So imagine like you put Control A. So all that all this data, this this will be taken in consideration. I will read all of them because, uh, well, I need to check just few columns, but I will read all of them for um, being uh, convenient. So I need to only create the data table, save this table into a data table so I can uh, read it. So I'll create a new variable called input data, right? And now I can go uh, through this data and I will do it in a way that I will go line by line, so row by row, and check for this columns for their data if they are valid and so on. For this, I need uh, not Excel activities, but I need activity from data tables because I just saved the table into a data table variable for each row in data table, very long name, and I will just put it under it, under this one. So this one, oh, actually, let me check one more thing. Add headers, yes, okay, I, I want to add headers. This one will. Uh, want for me to know the data table, which is input data, that's just here. And this thing I will just ignore, there's nothing really interesting. And uh, maybe I will, oh no, that's not what I wanted, but uh, I wanted to just add a little note here. So do with each row, so it's more clear for anybody who will take the code after me. And uh, now, what we want to check, we want to check, let's, let's start with the first thing. So that was must be a valid date in that this format. Um, this will be quite easy to check because there is a special function for it to check if it's a valid date in uh, that format. Um, or may maybe you will find a different way, but there are always many ways. So I will show you how to do it in a, let's say simple way. So of course, if I want to check something, if some something is true or not, I need the if clause or if condition. So that's what I will drop inside these containers and we will not really go much deeper. So if, and let's just give it a name, if um, date is valid. So I will be asking the conditions like if it's fine. And in the else part, I will actually perform uh, the highlight if there is a problem. I like it better like this because uh, I like to keep like a happy flow in the true sections, like in the then section, like true, and the unhappy flow in the else part. I believe it makes more sense uh, to read it as like a, something that should happen and something that should not happen. Well, shouldn't be there. Well, we do the validation check, never mind. So, what I want to do is to check by function is date. That's a function, right? That I just uh, not telling you. And now I want to check that uh, column. So, I use the, this placeholder um, or temporary variable, current row. And in brackets, I will put the name of the column. It will, it's just, it's giving me hints, so date. And, uh, and that's it, right? Oh, yes, okay, good. Thanks. So. so this will be this will be checking the date. And now, okay, here I can leave it empty because I don't need to perform anything, and I don't even need a sequence there since I will only use one single activity here to uh, set the color. And this activity is called set range color. And I put it there. And I need to specify a few things: the system drawing dot color for the specified cell. So here I need to do a little a little trick to supply a color in this format, system.drawing.color, color, dot. And now I can actually choose from some pre, uh, pre, 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 how to say, uh, colors that are already to be chosen. If you need your color, maybe you know how to do it. So let's choose, uh, let's maybe not be too uh, hard on it and choose red. And uh, I will come to range a little bit later. I just uh, straightly will uh, enter the sheet name, right? So that's that's clear. And now the range. So range, you either supply a range, 
uh, but you have to supply it in the way how Excel will uh, work with it. So for example, uh, B4 till D11 will be, would be a range, right? But I just need one cell, so I can supply just one cell uh, coordinates like this. But first of all, for this particular example, I pres pres presume that like I know the uh, letter and then the number, I will show you the trick how to how to take it. So I know that this is actually in column A, so this can uh, stay there. And now how to get the row. So I will help, I will do with little help of uh, a property of this for each row in data table, and that's this on the right side index. So I will create a new variable, which would be an integer, and I call it uh, idx, just uh, like that. And we can see that it actually is created here and it's integer. And this uh, variable, I will get an index of each row. So if I am at the first row, here, for example, right, it will be index zero, here index one, here index uh, two. So as you see, in, in the row that in Excel is counted as two, uh, index is zero. So there is two, a difference of two. Uh, why? Because Excel is counting from one and we programmers we are counting from zero. And of course, I'm in, uh, ignoring the header. So it will not actually uh, go loop through and check the header. So if I want to point at this particular place, I need to use A and then the index plus two, which will be very easy to do. So I use plus, then idx plus two, and now I have to convert it to string like this. And this should be all. So let's maybe just run first check on this, con uh, this logic that I just created. It's cool to run. The, the code during you're developing it because the rest will be pretty easy. This I will just copy and paste and I will just add other conditions and it will be uh, done. So let's check it. Let's uh, run it and see if I accidentally didn't do any, any error. So it should take uh, and check the first uh, column. And it's correct. 29 of uh, February in 2021 is not a valid date, which is cool because you're not just checking the format, but it actually checks if the date exists if it's a valid date. Also 11th of a uh, month number 15 doesn't exist and uh, June doesn't have 31 days. So these are all three wrong dates. You maybe wouldn't say from the first glance. So this works great and I will just uh, again make it uh, without any fill so I can check it later. And now the only thing that we have to do is to add the other three checks. So what we have there, use description cannot be empty. Great. Let me just steal this if and copy it and paste it under it and rename it because I don't want to create new things, right? So if um, user description is uh, not empty, which is that's, that's the correct thing, right? And I will use current row, what's the name? User description without a space user description dot to string and now I can use like uh, uh, is not empty like this but easier easier will be dot or there are other ways so length like length of the of the string is uh, bigger than zero so larger than zero so if there are any characters if there at least is one letter it should go to then and nothing will happen, there's no problem. Other than that, there will be an error and I will just need to change the column to B here. See, that's really easy. And now, next one. Again, I created a copy. I will uh, rename it to error code has to be at least three letters long. That's uh, another validation. This one must be, oh, sorry, must be exactly three characters long. Must be exactly three characters long. And I can just steal most of this uh, condition. So the name of it is error code. Oops. Error code. And I want to check if its, if its length is exactly three. And maybe somebody will add a space in the end or in the beginning, then you can add uh, trim 
to to cut the spaces from front and back just to make sure that uh, it's still three letters if you don't count uh, space as a letter or otherwise we're checking for characters and let's check the column the column is c okay so far we'll go a b c pretty easy and that's it and the last condition very last one would be to check and let me check what to check that the result can only contain approved or rejected in capital letters so result result where are you column g okay great so current row result dot to string is approved or and now the same without another one rejected right easy, easy as that this should this should just make it nicely this is the condition that i that i created for the last one so i'm checking either that the result is approved or the result is rejected pretty easy so of course i have to change the coordinates to column g so that's all so i just created four conditions like this for each row and should be fine of course you can implement other logic like uh, maybe also creating some log message and you can collect log messages and then just tell the user hey go to this exact coordinates and this exact coordinates and check for it Anyway, let's run it and see if it works. And you can still think about any questions you might ask, maybe some use case, maybe something you want to show in the next session. So, oh, I love to see how it's running, right? It's so, it's so nice. So let's check it. The dates, the dates are fine. That's what we tried. Here is the only empty user description. These are all codes that are not exactly three characters. Here are some typos approved with double O, ejected instead of rejected, and declined, which is not a matching word. The other things were in the second part of the challenge, which I probably will not go next week. Next week I want to show you something else. But anyways, that was the this the showcase that I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it, and if you want to just use it for your own or maybe recreate it, of course, as usual, first link in the video description should be a link to our community forum where you can download it but you don't need to register there even though i would recommend it because i'm trying to publish interesting content related to rpa just there but it's up to you right guys so let me check if you have any questions okay uh andrak thank you for this uh saying thank you i'm happy that you liked it so you're welcome my appreciation i hope you come next week to another topic and also there is a link to subscribe to the mailing list if you wish to know the topic in advance but of course, you can check this channel anytime. It's not uh, going anywhere because it stays on YouTube and you can watch it from the recording later. If you will have later any specific questions to it, also you can ask on the forum, you can ask under the video and so on. So this was the question section and I believe that's all. So I would love to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Uh, we recently reached a quite nice number of subscribers, which is lovely. And uh, if you still want to know a little bit more about uh, some other challenges, maybe some other videos, then go ahead and watch them, search on our channel and check the links in the video description, guys. So it was a pleasure again and uh, I hope that I will see you next Friday and I wish you happy autumn. <laughs>